Welcome to the Berkstrom Bunch podcast. I'm Jason. And I'm Kathy. On a previous podcast, we shared five things I wish I would have known about marriage. Yes. Well, this week we're continuing in that vein. We're talking about five things I wish I would have known before I had kids. Yep. <laughs> and this should be fun because neither one of us has consulted the other. As yeah. we did, didn't do last time either, so it'll be interesting to see what each so, one of us can So, yeah, we're going to be surprised by each other. Maybe maybe it's the same thing. We'll find out. Yeah. All right, so ladies first, we're going to start with you. Okay. Number one thing you wish you had known okay, before well, you my, had kids. My first one is actually very cliche. I think everybody probably thinks about this, but one of the things that my first one that I came up with is just how fast the time will go by. And we've talked about this multiple times, I think, in some of the other podcasts, just um, what we've done with the kids as they've been growing up, but just the time flying by is so fast and how important it is to have traditions and make solid memories that are things that will stick with the kids as they get older and, uh, you know, just be embedded in their memory. So that was my first one. All right. So that's actually my number five. So I'll just, oh. I'll just piggyback right <laughs> off of that. Is, so now you only have four. Uh, yeah. So this uh, We this just start crossing one. them off as, as we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'll remember that I used it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's like a few days ago, they were toddlers. And now yeah. they're married. they're all adults and yeah. And married. Mar- not all married, but, you know, getting heading in that direction. Yes. But um, yeah, it's it's crazy. And um, you just have to enjoy every moment yeah. and, and savor every moment because it's, it's fun. It should be fun. Um, you should have a good time with your kids. Not every moment's fun, obviously, but um, you have to enjoy the moments and take lots of pictures. Yep. All right, number two for you then. Oh, number two for me. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said and take lots of pictures, and actually, that's my number two is to be in the photo. No, actually, my number two is to be in the photograph, (laughs) not take photographs. Be in the photograph because I recently went through a lot of old pictures, just kind of getting rid of of multiples that we had when you actually used a camera that had film. And so just going through all the old pictures and I just kept thinking, I'm not in most of these pictures. You were the only one that knew how to use the 32 millimeter camera. <laughs> and and when you used it, sometimes I was cut off in some, if my head or something. Yeah, I could frame. I may not know what the f-stop is, but I <laughs> well, can frame yes, it. Yes, <laughs> or it was dark or it was dark and you, I, you just couldn't see that I was in there. But anyway, but that was just something that struck me as I thought, oh my goodness, I'm not in many of these photographs at all. So anyway, that's what I wish somebody would have told me is be in the photograph. Make sure that and you're... Invest in a good selfie someone, stick. Someone... Well, there were no selfies back then. It's a travesty. Yeah. We had we had real cameras back then that required film loading. And so anyway, so yeah, yeah, when you're the only one that knows how to use the camera, that makes it a little difficult to be in the Selfie picture. with the kids more often. Selfie with the kids more All right, often, yes. I got it. I got it. All, All right. right. So my number one, which is now my number two, uh, is that they're God's kids before they're your kids. And we talked about this in our last podcast. And so Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't listened to that one, go back a week. Um, But this idea that we have this stewardship where they're God's kids before they're our kids. And so we're raising our kids, but raising them with the mindset that they are God's kids and they need to develop a relationship with God. They need to learn faith. They need to learn dependence on God. At first, a kid is totally dependent on you, uh, when I say you, I mean you as the mom, <laughs> especially. But uh, every need, they, they, they're dependent on parents. But as they grow, you want to teach them to seek God for wisdom, for decision-making, for yeah. character building, and seek, teach them to learn how to develop a relationship with God and how to pray and how to hear from God. Because there's going to be a point in your life when you're just a, a source of wisdom or someone to bounce ideas off of but you you cannot make directives in your kids life once they're married and move out and (laughs) you're no longer in charge and so you want to make sure that they can tap into god's wisdom and and guidance for their life and so they need to learn to obey you so that they can learn to obey god yeah and that's actually that's so important i mean obviously we want them to um, respect our authority, but ultimately there has to be an authority that's even higher than ours. Well, I mean, to it's me, something that's, that that's why they have to learn to yes. respect your authority. Yeah, yeah, they need something that brings conviction, Absolutely. and and they know that they're being watched even when mom and dad aren't watching. So, and so that lends completely to my number three, which is um, 
the character and behavioral benefits of not spoiling them. And it's so easy, especially when they're young and they're so cute to just give them everything that they want. And, uh, and of course, as you well know, I had Brittany when you and I started dating and Brittany was spoiled. <laughs> um, I can concur with that. Absolutely. And I, I think you may have been the first person to ever give her a spanking. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but she, yeah, I gave her everything that she wanted, but you know, in large part, I, I understand the mentality behind that because being a single parent as I was and, um, working as well, the last thing you want to do when you get home from work is discipline your child. You've not seen them all day long, and yet you do. You kind of feel guilty about not just giving them everything they want because— Yeah, and you want that love and affection from them. Yeah, absolutely. And you want them to be happy, and you you feel like that's what's going to make them happy. And so anyway, um, so yeah, I wish that I wish that I would have known that before having children. But in turn, coming to a place where I started recognizing the value of not spoiling and— um, and incorporating that in our parenting and making sure that the kids know the value of earning versus just feeling entitled just because you want it doesn't mean that you get it and you can't just give mom and dad attitude just because you want to give attitude and you're upset about something you can't throw temper tantrums in the grocery store or we won't bring you back to the grocery store and um you know just helping them to have this this mindset of having um rather than having entitlement um you know feeling very much like they need to earn it both in their behavior and maybe in their savings um, and just in a variety of areas not being spoiled. Yeah. Well, that uh, ties right into my number four, which is let them carry the weight of their decisions. Uh, I think both good and bad because we don't tend to learn from our mistakes unless there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And so in thinking of raising a child, it is exhausting to police a toddler in timeout. (laughs) <laughs> or to continue to verbally correct them or yell mm-hmm. at them. it It's exhausting. True story. And uh, it, it just brings a lot of stress into the home. But if there's a natural consequence, you spent all of your money, uh, you know, on little things, gum, Chick-fil-A, and now your friends want to go to the amusement park and you don't have that money. Well, that's the consequence of a lot of little decisions yeah. that added up. And so it's hard. It's hard to watch your kids miss out on something fun that all everybody else is doing and all the mm-hmm. cool kids are there and yeah. all their friends are there and they can't go. N- not because you're, <laughs> you've denied them. It's because they, they didn't do the work. They didn't save up. And so yeah. that's the consequence. You, you knew there's opportunities. We've talked about saving and you didn't do it. So yeah. sorry. Now... <sighs> Another thing we learned is like giving them opportunities to earn money. I mean, that's that's real life, isn't it? You, you don't have money. You, you got to work and earn more. So yes. you want to wash cars, pull weeds, yeah. you know, hustle. Okay, let's see if you can pull it together. But yeah. Uh, well, let me, our... let, me, let me add to that just one second here I because I just had a thought about I know a parent who just was getting all over her son's case to get his swim trunks. He was going to a birthday party, and she kept telling him to grab his swim trunks, grab his swim trunks. I was there at the house, so I saw all this go down and um, so many times. And just sure enough, by the time they got to the birthday party, no swim trunks. No swim trunks. So the mom ran out to the store and bought him new swim trunks because he didn't bring a swim trunks. Well, there's a consequence. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I just, that's, it, that just came to mind when you were talking about this and just how, well, and even today, this young man's not a little boy anymore and he's very, very irresponsible and someone's always needing to take care of him. And ironically, he still lives with his mother and he's in his 20s. So anyway, just to say that when they're young, if they don't experience consequences, then that will carry into you their adult years as well. One of our kids that uh, we adopted, no names here, but um, when we took when we took her in, I, I bought an alarm clock. And day number two, <laughs> okay, here's your alarm clock. Here's here's how you set it. Here's here's batteries, everything you need. And from now on, you decide, you know what time the bus comes in the morning. And it was early. The bus always came at mm-hmm. dark 30. But Okay, if the bus shows up at dark 30 and you ha- decide how much time you need to get ready. And then so that's how you calculate when to set your alarm and you have at it. Well, this child I, I was never ready on time. Oftentimes yeah. woken up by the bus driving by the house. Now, fortunately, the bus had to go down around the corner, turn around in the cul-de-sac. So you had a couple minutes when the bus passed. But 
her her uh, her exhilarating wake up was running down the driveway, and that's how her hair was made by the, the wind swept hair yes. and onto the bus. <laughs> and so I, I think she learned to just sleep in her school clothes. But um, that's I I I did let her know that if you need a ride, I will give you one to school, but it's going to cost you fifteen dollars. You got to cover my gas, my time. That's that's cheaper than Uber still, um, but. She never, <laughs> she never asked me for a ride. Uh, I think she walked to school one day um, rather than ask for a ride. I mean, it was only eight miles, but um, that was the consequence. Yes. You sleep in, that's fine. You're going to be late for school. Yes. And whatever consequences follow with that. Well, and she did make it to school. <laughs> obviously because she graduated so but it, it's hard <laughs> she didn't like, miss you, enough school you, to... you, you struggle with that. I don't want her grades to be affected. I don't want her performance to be affected, but <laughs> that's that's a short-term thing compared to yes. those character lessons yes. that you need to learn early on. Absolutely. Well, and that's that that lends to my number 4. And it it almost is like we coordinated this even though we didn't because we're just kind of playing off each other, but um how much who I am will determine who they become. Mm. How much of who I am and how I develop myself, the type of leadership I provide, the things that I model for them, my attitudes, my behaviors, my structure, my patterns, um, all of those things, and, and just developing myself and becoming a better person as I move along, um, how, my, how important that is as you're raising kids as well, that you don't just stop developing yourself just because you have children. In fact, the more you develop yourself and... Um, strive to be the best version of you, the more you have to impart to your children and the more they see those things and will emulate them. And um, I just think about um, going back to your illustration when it comes to money and saving and um, just when we had Hurricane Ike come through when we lived in Texas and we've had Ike, Irma, Ian, all the eyes. Yep. <laughs> next. Yeah, and then, um, well, and then when this hurricane was coming through, um, Caitlin had saved up a huge amount of money, and I think it was like $200 or something like this. I can't remember, but she was, I, I believe, about $40 short in buying this huge Millennium Falcon. Oh, um, the, thing from, was, the thing was massive. Yeah, from Hastings, yeah, where Brittany worked. If they had that when I was a kid, I would have definitely donated an organ to purchase yeah. it. <laughs> I think Caitlin would have donated a body part as well, maybe maybe a toe or something, I don't know. But anyway, she wanted she wanted this thing so badly, and she she did not buy frivolous things because she needed a chunk of money to buy something bigger. So she was willing to delay that gratification because she wanted something, you know, so badly and was willing to save up for it. And so anyway, and you know, and we've tried to model that for our children, just them seeing that mom and dad just don't run out and just spend money frivolously. I mean, I probably, I probably spend more money more frivolously now than I did once upon a time, just because I have more money to spend frivolously, I guess. But, um, but just to say that I can see that in our kids that, um, well, maybe not all of them are perfect in their spending, but they all do have, they, they all do have savings. Well, say, okay, except for one, there is one exception to the rule of my children right now that is, is still working on those spending, Always saving, the balance, the balance between spending and saving. But, um, but for the most part, just seeing that, you know, what we have modeled in the kid or for the kids has taken root in the kids. And, you know, the more perfect we try to be in, in modeling it, the better they have an example in those areas. And I, I just think of even the kids growing up and how structured you were when it came to fitness. And you've always been oriented in that direction. And, um, and you've modeled that for the kids and have taken them on that journey with you and uh, and even set up, you know, a workout plan for them, especially when we were schooling them and they, they had to have that as part of their fitness goals anyway. But um, just seeing how that has carried over into their adulthood. They really loved that too. <laughs> they really loved that. Um, yeah, love is a very strong word to add in there for sure. Um, but, uh, but no, just to say that even though we've not been, you know, perfect in how we've modeled everything, just seeing that the, the most important things have been picked up by them. And so, you know, just again, going back to how much who I am determining what they will become, but then also who they choose as a spouse and, um, you know, just thinking about even our girls and, you know, Caitlin just getting married. And one of the things that she stated is, you know, that you've you've created a platform that you know somebody else has to live up to and she found a man that she feels is very much like her dad well 
I, the fear with a lot of parents, especially when your kids are teenagers, is that everyone else has more influence than you. The friends, and you worry about the friend groups they're with, and, the, and you should, but the truth of the matter is, uh, we saw this over and over in youth ministry, is that it is the parents that have the greatest influence on the kids. If you see weird kids, and you're like, wow, what happened to that kid? And then you meet the parents, it kind of makes sense, right? And so it is... The parents are the greatest influence. That's a good thing. That's also a bad thing. It just depends on the parents. But yeah, what you what you model gets carried down for sure. Yep. Good stuff. Okay. All right. So my next one, uh, this was my number two, uh, is to start with the end in mind. It can be, there can be a lot of frustrating moments as a parent. There's so many moments where you wonder, is is there any change? Am I making any progress? Is this kid ever going to mature out of this? And the toddler years, the, the teenage years, uh, I mean, just a lot of moments for frustration, but you always need to be working towards a goal of understanding that someday this child is going to raise my grandkids. Uh, they're going to take care of me when I'm old and they're going to spend whatever is left behind when I go. And so I, I'm that the goal is to forge this child into a contributing member of society and always keeping that goal in mind. And so letting a kid sit all day with a tablet, maybe not the best way to develop them into that person that they need yeah. to be. Um, and so um, working towards, okay, what are some things that are going to take this child to the next level that are going to shape them, that are going to help them um, develop into who they need to be? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, I saw a little bit, uh, some video clip that kind of touches on what you're talking about. And it was actually a child that was on, on a tablet, like you're talking about, just playing, playing, playing. And then it, it shifted to like a junior high, junior high years for this kid and on uh, some sort of cell phone device. And then into adult years, like this child with their spouse also just on their phone and just just kind of those patterns and how um, how self-absorbed we can become unless we have you know certain structures and disciplines and so I think that as parents those are the things that we need to think about is what am I shaping this person into what are they going to develop what patterns am I creating now um, and that's something I do I, I wish that I would have known before having children as well because then then I would have been far more intentional about certain things yeah. as I raise them um, you know, because it's easy to just let life happen instead of making life happen. So did you have anything else on that point that you wanted to throw out there? Uh, no, let's move on to your number five. Okay, my number five. Um, my number five is that they will grow up to be some of your closest friends. Ooh. That if you, yeah, if you raise them, if you raise them to be people that you enjoy being around, and others will enjoy being around. Then as once they become adults, they become some of your closest friends. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, and all of my children are adults now, so I can say that. So. And I, an important part of that process is um, making sure you find time for adventure. Yes. And, um, I mean, something that I wish I would have done more of is mm. more of the slow down some of those moments. Yeah. I mean, I'm always thinking about the next project and what needs to be accomplished and there's times I wish I would have stopped and slowed down. And, yeah. Um, you're better at encouraging me me in that and that I am also always in but following better, through. But you're better at finding adventure than I am. So, I mean, <laughs> hiking trips, yeah, waterfalls. But it's, we've learned to find adventure everywhere. And, you know, there's every trip there was some sort of chaos. A uh, flat tire, you forgot. You know, camping trips, we always forgot something. Mm -hmm. And the rule was we had to make an adventure out of it. I remember um, you were on a trip. You had gone to pick up uh, some of our nephews, and they lived several hours away. And on the way back, kids in car seats, they were young. Um, the van uh, broke down. I think it overheated and on, in the, on the freeway, and uh, you were towed to a shop. And mm -hmm. you, you took the kids, and there was a series of, of shops and industrial warehouses, and you took the kids uh, and Christmas caroled. <laughs> <laughs> to all these <laughs> shops inside the industrial I can't, park. I can't even remember which of the cousins was with them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. But, um, you know, hey, we're, we're here. The van's not getting done any quicker. So let's let's make a memory. Let's make an adventure yeah. out of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And the kids were willing. So, you know, mm-hmm. as they got older, they weren't quite as willing. Less to do willing some, to sing yeah, in public. Less, yeah, less willing to sing in public. Less willing to dress up as elves and <laughs> other costumes that I made them at Christmas time. So I, I yeah. think I think we need to give another run at it. Let's give oh it a shot. my goodness! I'm sure the kids would be going to present them with their elf costumes. The next and, adventure. Oh yeah, they'll love it. They'll yeah, love it. the Bergstrom family singers. <laughs> I am not a singer. I am not right. a singer either. Okay. You do, we'll the... you do play a pretty good harmonica, though. You know, I try. You busted All that right. out at, at <laughs> Caitlin's wedding. Yeah. So anyway, but yeah, just that they'll grow up to be some of your, your closest friends. That's good. Uh, my last one is to give them a role. Um, they Kids need to learn purposeful living. And each kid, and this is hard. It's part of the letting go process, but... Um, learn you know part of them being god's kids is that they have a god-ordained purpose and you know sometimes that uh that takes them other places but you have to start when they're young in terms of giving them a role um i always wanted our kids to have no memory of not doing chores (laughs) and and maybe that's because i i'm sure they appreciated that goal (laughs) i don't i can't remember early enough in my life when i didn't have chores Mm -hmm. and so maybe that's where i got that from but yeah if you think about it you know toddlers are horrible at sweeping floors or wiping up counters yes they're just it's a mess and it's it's oftentimes more of a mess when they're done than when they started Mm, i can attest to that (laughs) and so it's so easy to just let them run off and do their thing it's so much easier to sweep the floor yourself to while they play. Um, and, and that's something we had to learn early on is like, no, they, they need to have that role, even mm-hmm. if it takes more work, mm-hmm. because this is when they learn it. Mm, yes. And even, even kids, if they can walk, they can carry stuff to the, to the trash can. They can put stuff in the, the toy box. At that point, yeah. you have to do it with them. But... Um, uh, yeah, kids, but it, well, they always knew that if they didn't get a chore done, then they wouldn't be able to go do whatever fun thing they wanted to do. And I don't know where Brittany got this skill from, but I still remember, and maybe we shared this in a podcast previously because it's just the most hilarious thing, but Brittany would have all her girlfriends spend the night. I think it was on Friday night. Yeah, because Saturday, Saturday was chore yeah, day. Yeah, Saturday was yeah, chore day. absolutely. And then she, she would, and this is why she manages our gym. She would manage all her friends and have one in the kitchen doing something, one in the bathroom doing something, one in her room doing something. And then she'd go walk around and make sure that it was getting done. Them. Yeah, yeah, make sure it was There's getting done. There's a deadline. We, we cannot play Barbies yes. until the job is done. That's right. So, yeah, I, I remember all her friends cleaning the toilet. Yep. And, so I don't, yeah, I don't, I think you succeeded in them not having any memory of not doing chores, but we have some fun memories of how they actually got those chores done. So. Uh, well, here's the cool <laughs> thing is that, they take pride and ownership. Mm-hmm. If if someone's in charge of the floors, um, and they, they notice if someone tracks dirt into the house, and they'll get on that person, hey, wipe off your shoes, take off your shoes, don't don't track dirt on my carpet, yeah, because I've got to vacuum that. And so they, um, if they don't, if kids don't have responsibility, uh, they only care about their own stuff. Yeah. Hey, don't touch my Xbox. Get out of my room. But if they have responsibility, they take ownership of that that area, that bathroom, that kitchen, that yard, and, and they care what happens. They care yeah. if a storm blows through and knocks all the branches in the yard because yeah. <laughs> that's on them. But they also develop pride in that, in a yeah. good way. Pride and hey, this is absolutely. pride in a job well done. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I just, I'll, I'll go back to um, what I think it was your number three or four, or just um, start with the end in mind. And so I think all of these kind of lend to to that just um, preparing in advance as you're raising your children, kind of thinking through who do I want this person to develop into and not shaping them in such a way that they become just a replica of you being into the sports that you're into or the things that you're into um, and, and, you know, kind of pushing them in a direction that isn't naturally their bent, but more so thinking, okay, when this person becomes an adult, what type of a person do I want them to be? Do I want them to be somebody that I would like to spend time with? Or do I, do I want them to become someone that's so self-absorbed that they have a hard time making friends? They have a hard time stepping into other situations and being a part of anything because they're so reclusive. So, no, that's absolutely great. Okay, any last thoughts that you have on, yeah. on your phone? Yeah, um, I'm just going to key off one you said is that they're going to they're gonna model what they see. And so they're going to pick up. 
uh, in in unfortunately it's it's the bad habits they pick up first mm-hmm. right if if you slip up and say something you didn't mean to say like that's what gets repeated like how come you're repeating oh, that and not <laughs> and not you know me washing dishes but um, the, <laughs> the the bad things are going to get repeated but the good things uh, they take longer they take longer to be ingrained but <laughs> I yes. would just say persevere because um, we've been through those moments where it feels like, uh, are these kids going to become who they need to be? Are they going to mature beyond this? Are they going to yeah. learn these things we're trying? And it's, it, it feels like a long haul, but it's it's over before you know it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think that as we've, as we've covered these five things, and of course we're talking about five things I wish I would have known before I had children, but I also think that they lend to you a little bit to our last podcast, which was, you know, basically on investing in young people. And so I think that if you're in a position where you're investing in people in a general sense, that really is, you do want to have that mindset of, uh, starting with the end in mind, what what do I hope to achieve and accomplish in this person through my influence, through my modeling, my example? And as you mentioned, um, the bad things typically are picked up because they're the easiest to replicate. By default, we default to the things that aren't healthy for us. And so, you know, if you're trying to model eating habits, but then you go out and you you eat junk food with someone, well, they're going to justify every time they eat junk food because you also did it. And so anyway, just to say that... Um, you know, we, we do have a huge responsibility when we take on those roles in the lives of people, in particular our children. And I think the most beautiful thing that I've seen is when the kids are a reflection of their parents and it's a very healthy family unit and um, they're not perfect, but they're all they're all striving, you know, to try to be the best version of themselves and um, and just seeing that handed down because that's what we're giving to the next generation. So, all right, good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I would just end with this. Enjoy the process. Enjoy try to enjoy the moments. Yes. And then and then maybe play with that millennium folk and also when your child gets it and there's a hurricane and there's a whole I, lot of nothing else to do. <laughs> I did. I did. I helped her fly that thing around the yeah. living room. Absolutely. <laughs> Some assembly required. All right. Well, we thank you guys for joining us. And as always, um if if this was beneficial to you, please comment on it and share it, like, subscribe, you know all the stuff to do. It really helps us get the word out.